In this lecture, we will do the exterior texturing for this house. We will unwrap the UV for this main building. We'll take it to Photoshop, we'll texture paint that in Photoshop. And then we will apply some simple materials with basic colors on the other parts like the windows, doors, and this uh, metal piece and the cloth. We will start with the body of the house. And then we will do the windows and doors and other small props. So for the body, it is one single piece. I want to unwrap the UVs first, then I'll take it to Photoshop to paint the texture. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the UV looks. Now we can open the UV editor in a separate window, or we can attach it to our uh, main viewport. To do that, I will open up any two split layout. And in this one, we have the outliner for now. Instead of outliner, I can change it to UV texture editor by going to panels, panel, UV texture editor. So this is how the UV looks. It's basically a simple uh, spherical mapping that is being applied. I'll go ahead and apply a checker map and then we'll take this to, uh, we'll start the unwrapping. I'll go ahead and right click and go to favorite materials. I'll apply a Lambert. I'm going to name this as temp just because this is going to be a temporary texture. I'll go ahead and apply a checker. Okay, so that's how it looks. As you can see, there are lots of problems here and it's not matching up perfectly. So I'll start with this bottom area. I'll go ahead and select all these four faces. So you can see all these faces are being split like this. Let's go ahead and apply a cylindrical mapping on this so that it will wrap up the all the sides. I'll go ahead and choose create UVs, cylindrical mapping. Let's go to options. Nothing more to change here, just to reset and hit project. As you can see, it comes in perfect flat shape. That is nice. I want to take this entire space space so I'll just push this towards the back and we're going to give more importance to this front area so I will keep this joining edge to be in the back let's go ahead and choose the UV select all these UVs and see how that looks now sometimes the checker that is showing here might be disturbing for us so we can turn that off by clicking on this little face so that turns the texturing off just in our view viewport. Now it looks very tall and wide. That is not going to match what we have here. As you can see the boxes are being stretched out. So as we have discussed in the previous lecture, our target is to make these rectangles to look like squares. So I will go ahead and choose the scale tool by pressing R or I can click here to get the scale tool. And I'll start to scale in just one axis. So we should get the perfect square. Okay, I'll push this to the left a bit so that it tries to stay in the center. If it's not, I can also scale it in both the axes, that is X and Y, to make it fit. Not only in one axis, both the axes, yes. So I'll just push this down below to the bottom. Okay, good enough. I'll leave some little space in the bottom and move it a little left. Okay, that's perfect. So now you can see that all the sides have got the same exact uh, perfect square. Good enough. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the about one. Let's go to face. Select all these faces. So let's go ahead and do the same. Uh, UV, create UVs and then cylindrical mapping. Okay, again, I'll push this all the way to the end. Nice. And let's go ahead and make it, scale it smaller. We can also scale it with this scale tool. Okay, just to make sure that it comes almost perfect square. The, the height and the width are the exact same. You can make it a little small to see 
so you have to make it big to see if the proportion is correct or not I will have to pull it a little bit closer yes now it looks perfect square now I'll make it smaller to fit it in the inside this area that we have okay now we can also make sure that approximately both these box and these boxes are the same now especially for this example I'm going to just paint with color so it is not very important to make sure that these two boxes are the same but especially when you're painting with real uh, photographs then it is it is recommended that you maintain the same exact size between the different objects I'll go ahead and scale this further just to make it fit okay that's good enough I can push it a little bit down perfect okay so one done two done we have a little gap here which we can do that later now we'll focus on the roof so I'll select one two three four five and six and this side seven eight nine ten eleven okay let's press four and see if we have accidentally selected anything else I think that's correct Let's go ahead and press 5, 6 to see the textures. Okay, for this one I'm going to project from the top. So that would be more like a planar mapping. So planar mapping in Y axis. So I'll choose create UVs, planar mapping options. I'm going to choose Y axis and project. Okay, now I will have to make it smaller. Okay, let me make it smaller this way and I'll have to make it smaller this way okay make it bigger in both the axes to see if they got the correct proportions okay now I'll push it away okay now I will have to make the whole thing to be smaller in size to fit inside the space that we have. I'll scale them in both the axes. Okay. Let's see if it fits here. If it doesn't. I think I'll just make it a bit smaller and make it fit or I can also rotate it like so and try to put it horizontally here okay good enough now these rest of the things are just going to be uh, single color I'm not going to do any more any too much of painting on that so I can just select these UV right click or shift control right click and choose to shell so that selects the entire shell so that should be this remaining areas that is coming here I can just apply a simple planar projection I guess from the top I think that should do create UVs planar mapping What happened okay I, I've selected the UVs I should go ahead and select the uh, faces so that selects all the faces based on the UVs now I'll go ahead and choose planar mapping okay so that comes like that I'll make it small because this area doesn't really matter too much so I'll just select all these UVs and I'll just move that just to this corner okay so that's good enough let's check out this area where is this coming from okay this is this bottom area I'll select this shell also and this would take care of these uh, faces I will I will go ahead and apply a planar mapping on the same so that it'll give me a square shape I can put it throughout this as an outline for the entire shape uh, entire UVs I'll go ahead and choose two faces I have to press control key to do this so that selects all these faces 
I'll go to create UVs, planar mapping, so that gives me a full size shape. Let me check this UVs and see if it is uh, affecting any of these other ones. Okay, there are little problems. I can push these things a bit closer. Okay, I'll select this one, shift select this one, want that from this one, and I'll push these two a little bit down so that it does not uh, affect the others. And in this case, I will make this a bit smaller. A little small now. Okay, or I can also make the other one bigger. And these are not a big deal. They're, they're actually just touching or just inside. I can push these ones also out. This is the roof actually, so. And these ones also, I can move them a bit down. Or let me just rotate this. Okay, rotation, it's better to do like this so that it will give us accurate 45 degrees rotation. That's good enough. So now it is not touching anything. It's not affecting anything else. Actually, even this one, we can push this up. Okay, so we can leave this in the same place where it was, giving up the same proportion. Okay, and finally, one last thing, that is this bottom two faces, which are just floating here. This is not of any use, but I'll just apply a planar mapping just to push that. Just for fun, we can uh, keep it connected to the entire picture. So the entire UV that you create will be shown here because this bottom area is never going to be visible in the rendering. So we don't have to bother too much about it. But we can just look at the entire uh, UV layout uh, here once we finish the texturing part. So the UV layout is being created. UV is ready now. So we can start painting in Photoshop. So we already have applied a dummy texture here, which we can get rid of right now. I'll go ahead and right click on that, break connection so that checker is gone now. Now all we have to do is we have to take this to Photoshop. So in the UV texture editor, let's make sure that we selected the object, make sure that it is selected and go to image and choose create PSD network. And I can choose where I want to save the file. So I'll save this as house UV new, because I already have a file. So I'll choose uh, 1024 by 1024. And I'll choose only the color attribute. I don't want anything else right now. And the color value for the UV snapshot, we can leave it as red or if you want to change the color you can also do that. And I'll hit create button. This should open up Photoshop. So that's the UV layout that we have. And now make sure that whatever you create has to be inside this temp.color. So temp is basically the name of the material and color is the attribute that is going to be applied on this. Let's go ahead and start painting. I'll start with a, some kind of a yellowish color as a whole uh, wall color. I'll just paint out I'll go ahead and take a new layer that's better. Okay, I'll just start to paint that. I've got an opacity of less, so I'll just make that 100%. Okay, or I can actually paint this for the entire texture. And then I can start to detail out the rest of the things. I'll go ahead and take a new layer, and I'll paint out this roof. So I'll go ahead and take a different colors. So that is something like a brownish color that I want. Uh, let's see if I can get something from my swatches. I've got some brown here. Okay, brown or kind of red will also do. Okay, let me choose brown. Paint that out. I think that's too dark. Let me choose some darker red. Yeah, I think that looks good. So I'll paint out this. I don't want this outside area to take that. Just the inside area. Okay, just paint out one single color. I'll go ahead and save this file and check how this looks in Maya. Now after coming back to Maya, I'll have to select the object and choose image and update PSD network. So 
as you can see it has updated the texture with the different colors that we have chosen for the roof it gives us uh, the reddish color that we have chosen and for the entire house it is the yellowish color that we have chosen good I'll go ahead and do some more detail here I will have to paint out a bit more here I'll make the brush uh, sharp I'll just paint out here so that just to make sure that uh, it's covering up the entire shape okay if it looks if it doesn't look so good in the outside that is not a problem but just to make sure that uh, the edges till the edges the colors are correct okay so okay so that's good enough for the roof and let's go ahead and do the same on these uh, sides before that we have to update that now whatever changes we make here it will affect only when we save the file and even saving is not enough we'll have to come back here and update that we can go to this uh, material and we can say reload so that will update that here or we can also go to image and choose update PSD networks either way it works now let's add the same color here I think that was this one so I'll apply the same color here okay so I'll save that go back here and reload yes so that gets the color now let's go ahead and do a sample render and see how that looks I'll go to the render settings okay let's go to Maya software make it production quality and nothing much to be changed right now okay so that looks more flat single colored render okay so let's try to give a little bit more detail to this instead of just having a single plain color we can just paint a little bit color uh, to make it look better than this so go back to Photoshop so instead of the single color let's uh, pick up the same color and take a new layer change this blending mode to multiply and now I can just paint that out yeah so as you can see it shows up multiplied color I'll reduce the opacity a bit okay so not too much just a little bit okay so we can add it in all directions throughout the edges okay so we can do a little test out we can see how this looks after this effect and if we want to increase more we can increase more so we'll go ahead and save this let's go ahead and go back so I'll save this image and make a new render so you can see that it gives a little bit more detail compared to how it was before All right so it instead of just having a flat simple color we can uh, add this little detail now we can also make it a little bit more stronger in these edges and a bit lighter throughout the center area I'll make the brush size a bit smaller I'll add more thicker lines now the more times you draw on top of this the better it will look I mean it, the darker it will become okay so I'll just draw as much as I want okay and I'll continue to do the same thing down here make the brush size a bit bigger and I'll make the opacity uh, higher okay so I'll just add a little bit more by keeping the opacity a bit more down just like just to make this bit more smooth instead of to show more like a rectangular shape okay, I'll make it a bit more softer throughout I'll save this and come back here save the image reload here and make a new render
okay so compared to how it was before and how it is now so that adds a bit bit more uh, detail to it uh, instead of just having a flat single color right we can do a similar kind of painting on the roof also we can make it a bit darker throughout the edges and a bit lighter to the, to the center so that is about the main building now let's go ahead and start to paint these uh, doors and windows now for doors and windows we can just simply apply a single color I could just select all these doors and windows and I'll go ahead and right click on this to create a new material so I'll choose new material and the doors and windows are not going to have any reflections or anything so I'll choose Lambert I'll give a name for this Lambert I'll choose doors door windows okay and I'll just choose a color here something like a brownish color pick up this one and that's it now if you want to paint from uh, Photoshop if you have so much of close-up or details to be shown here you can do the same UV layout and take it to Photoshop and you can also paint it for this case it's going to be more like a long shot so I think this looks good enough okay now we can add up windows inside this meaning like the glass windows that looks inside by adding some more faces so I'll select this or this one I'll go ahead and choose the edge I'll select or double click on this edge to select all these edges these ones also I'll go ahead and choose extrude edge extrude it to the center until it becomes invisible and I'm going to select all these faces and I'll apply a separate texture only on these faces so as you can see it's a single object which has got brown color outside and only for these faces I will apply a new layer so that would be more like a glass so I will choose Fong in Fong I will choose some light bluish color I'll give a name to this glass window glass I can do the same thing on all the other windows also I'll select the window I'll choose the uh, edge double click forgot one thing here okay double click here also and extrude edge scale it down select all these faces right click existing material and window glass okay I'll continue the same thing here so I'll go ahead and press 6 check out the render okay that looks nice you can continue to do the same for all these other windows I will go ahead and duplicate them Let's go ahead and do a render and see how that looks. So that looks nice. And finally, we'll uh, have to do a couple of things for this the concrete, the, the steel pipe that comes here, and the roof. So I'll select these ones first. I'll apply a simple color. For these also if you want you can do the UVs take it to Photoshop and paint them with details if you want or uh, just applying a simple texture will also do I'll apply a Lambert 
So this Lambert is for uh, wall or concrete color. I'll pick up the same color, that same yellowish color that we have applied earlier. So pick the color from there. And the same color gets applied to both of these. OK. And for this one, uh, the best thing is I've got lots of divisions. So it'll be easy for us to do a coloring on this. So I'll apply two colors, white and blue. So I'll create two textures, and I'll select the faces and apply them depending on the way I want. So first I, I will apply a blue color, a white color for all of them. So I'll right click and choose new material. Uh, this one can be a bit reflective. I'll choose blend. I'll choose bluish color, dark blue. Uh, I think it's a little too dark, maybe a little less dark, a bit more. Okay, I think that looks good enough. If it doesn't look good, we'll change it later. And next is I have to select uh, alternative faces. So I'll go ahead and choose the top view. I'll choose face. Let me select this first one. Shift, select the alternative ones. Okay, that's good enough. And now for these, I will go ahead and apply new material. So I'll right click, choose new material. This will also be a blend, but the color will be 100% white. I think I'll apply this edge also with the same white. So I'll right click and choose existing material. The last Lambert, I think, has to be, sorry, blend, blend two. So that would be white. Good. I can also give names to these. So blend one will be called as uh, blue cloth or any name you like. This one will be called as white cloth. Good enough. And finally, we have to texture for these two metal pieces, steel pieces. I will go ahead and uh, first apply a smoothness on this, mesh, smooth. You can also increase the smoothness level to two, so that makes it really smooth. And now for these two, I will apply an anisotropic material, because anisotropic material will give us very good shininess. So anisotropic, I will choose the material, give a name, steel and we'll change the color to something like I'll try bluish color let's see how that looks so let's do a render okay I think I'll I'll have to make it a bit more darker blue go here Okay, so let's try how it was before. I'll save the previous one and do a render. I think that looks better. It has a little bit of uh, reflections, uh, shininess going through. That is nice. So this concludes this lecture of texturing the exterior house.